We have a great opportunity, and I say we don't get enough hip hop. So it's nice to see that uh, Mr. I don't know, should I call you Mr. Propaganda? Should I call you I'll Mr. Ganda? Mr. Aganda? Wow. I'll take it. Either or? Pick one. <laughs> you know, I was uh, I was making mention, I was telling some friends of mine, I said, uh -huh. it, it's funny because we don't get enough hip hop in, yeah. in this area. Uh, how have you seen hip hop grow? Probably, let's say within the last 10, 15 years, because there seems to be quite the change. Yeah. Um, I think it's been like an issue of like infrastructure, like uh, people understanding that like, we don't all need to go down the same pipeline, you know what I'm saying? Very regional, so like um, people are taking on the sound of their region, getting their business together and running, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's been like super encouraging and that's what I've seen like the biggest change in is like people owning their sound and creating their own lanes. You know what I mean? No, d yeah. definitely. And so let me ask you, and let's start right from the beginning on uh, where you grew up and just kind of the, the lifestyle change of you know, living where you live, living in L.A. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was born in South Central Los Angeles. Uh, I fell in love with hip-hop pretty young. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when, I, when I fell in love, like, there was no such thing as, like, Christian rap. There was plenty of Christians that did hip-hop. You know what I mean? But there was no such thing as like a, like a scene, you know? So I kind of always knew I could articulate my worldview, you know what I'm saying, with the craft that I have. And uh, I love LA, I still live in LA, you know what I'm saying? It's still the backdrop for kind of the, um, all the music I make is just, you know, that, just that cultural goulash that, you know, you get from growing up in LA. He's from Long Beach. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. You know, I live in Long Beach now, and, you know, we love our city. We bleed California, and uh, and uh, it shows up in our music. Yeah. Do, do you think, and I mean, when it comes to DJing, when it comes to emceeing, it, is there still that East Coast, West Coast, different styles, different ways that you DJ, different ways that you do hip-hop? I don't think there's necessarily an East or West Coast thing. It's just you develop a special relationship with the MC that you're working with, and you build that chemistry, and you just banter with each other and like he was saying earlier about carving your own lane I think him and I are just carving our own lane as far as uh, performance performances and style and chemistry so I think that's just the, the biggest difference tell me what, what was it like growing up in, in South Central Los Angeles it's, it's not <laughs> you hear a lot of stories <laughs> well um, I personally was from a uh, more like a Latino neighborhood so I don't have the same story as a lot of like my friends or my brothers. Um, so because of that, like I didn't really get kind of kind of allured into like the gang life because they were Latin gangs. So um, I do, however, remember seeing uh, when graffiti and breakdancing kind of like got really big in LA. I immediately fell in love. So um, I actually, in, in a lot of ways, like I avoided a lot of like the. Uh, the stuff you would expect, like the stuff you see in the news and in the movies and stuff like that. I just avoided it because I was such a, I was such an artist, you know what I mean? Um, and uh, learned Spanish pretty quick or I wouldn't have any friends. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was violent, it was dangerous, but uh, I just wasn't involved, you know what I mean? Um, but a lot of it was happening around me, you know, very loving family. Uh, and my parents became believers when I was um, in elementary school. And that really, really changed like uh, my upbringing because we found a church. And although a lot of them were former gang members, very loving, you know what I'm saying? And like, it kind of like took me into their families, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I don't have the typical like LA story. You know I mean? Which is good. Which yeah. is, I mean, yeah. you, you hear a lot of negative, and I mean, to be able to come out with the positive in the areas that you live in and the things that you've witnessed. When somebody comes up to you guys at a show or after a show, or you get an email and they say, "Prop, like, you have no idea how you, how your music has changed me. You have no idea how your guys' music has affected me." How does that hit you? It's super humbling. Like, I think about one the albums that did that to me when I was younger, you know what I mean? And um, the way I saw those artists, like, so it's super humbling and, and 
reminds me really of my my responsibility. You know what I mean? To uh, it's weighty. You know what I mean? To to steward that, knowing that you have that type of effect in people's life. Um, and then uh, a lot of times I like I flash back to writing that song or that poem, and I just think I just trip out. Like it's amazing what God does. You know what I'm saying? Well, I want to talk about the new album, but when it, when it comes to making the music, do you come up with, this is kind of what I have, and you guys work together, or do you say, listen, I got this beat, I got this, what do you think, could you put something to it? How, how does that work between the two of you? Well, we have a production team called Beautiful Eulogy up in Portland, and we work more like a band, like, where we get together, we have song concepts, and we make the songs from scratch, and um, his input is... More in like the performance aspect, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, putting together sets with him is really fun because we can find ways to be really creative and um, we can find ways to utilize the DJ and I mean, just make it fun up there. So, yeah. How, how much practice does it go into? Because, I mean, it's not just somebody standing in the back yeah. there pressing play. I mean, you're it's, it's a hard job. Yeah, it's really interactive. I think for me, it's just uh, a matter of memorizing the music and finding points in the song where I can get creative, do some effects or scratch or whatever. So it's just like studying for an exam. So let's talk about the uh, new album released yeah, last yeah. month. Uh, yeah. You know, how is the, the process going into that and just the reaction that you've been getting? Man, it's um, it's interesting. Like, I mean, it's the most records we've ever sold. And, you know, if you know Humble Beast, like we give away our music also. So the idea that people are buying it anyway is already, like, amazing. You know what I mean? Um, we immediately left for tour right after it dropped. And uh, it's really cool, like, you know, album being four days old and people singing along. Like, you just, it's never run-of-the-mill to me. It's never, like, just another day at the office. Like, it's always amazing to me. You know what I mean? Um, and it's been great, man. You know, God's been, like, really doing a lot of things with the record, and people are coming out to shows, and it's been dope, man. And really, like, I think one of the best lessons I learned was, like, you know, marketing is not so much... I mean, it's about numbers, but it's more about you, like I said, like, like stewarding your platform. So I need to be... do my best job with my best work and my best... Uh, attempt at sharing it with people. You know what I'm saying? So that's been like the probably the biggest lesson. Does the writing ever stop? Never. So you're already working on another new always. album? I'm always writing. What's uh, what's next for you guys? Well, we finish up the uh, West Coast leg of the Crimson Core Tour. Do Phoenix, LA, and then uh, and then uh, Seattle. And then I take my family on vacation. And family vacation, you're going where? Are you going to Disneyland? No, I live in L.A., so I'm not... Disney Rex World. No, I am going to Vancouver. Washington or Canada? British Columbia. I love it. Prop. I'm coming up here. <laughs> Prop, man, is, is good to uh, catch up on with you guys. You guys are fantastic. And uh, hopefully you'll be in uh, our neck of the woods sometime soon. Hopefully. Ladies and gentlemen, pick the album up. It is in stores right now. It's Propaganda.